Caden Hatcher looking to build off of a brilliant performance in his conference opener. Put together a stirring start at Northwestern State. Six innings, four hits, one run, two walks, four strikeouts in the victory in Natchitoches last week. HBU picked up a run in the first without coming up with a hit. And Morales will take off towards third and no chance for Pulshin to make the throw. Kevin Webby allows strike two to pass. HBU completely caught off guard by Joey Morales. Cahill still leading the team with two homers and seven RBIs. The 2-0 hit hard in the left center field. Otten will pursue. Valdez will wait. Otten can't get to it. It's gone. Third home run of Troy Cahill's first season with the Cardinals. Opens up the scoring. Nicholas takes a 2-1 lead. Thirty-two pitches in the first inning for Caden Hatcher, but he has really been able to respond. This will be the 57th pitch of the game as Caden Hatcher has put together a 12 and 11 pitch inning over the last two frames. HBU dugout trying to come alive. It's been a rough stretch for Houston Baptist. They've dropped four out of five in a lot of really close games against good competition. Slow roller towards first. Givon on the exchange with Hatcher, and he's there in time. 2-2 two -two pitch towards short. Morales can't barehand it. Play's going to be at home. Otten tries to score. He won't. Runner aboard. Colonel's up by a run. Van Marder watching the bunt back to the mound. He might have a play at second. Hatcher is ready, gets the out, and almost turns two. Caden Hatcher, he did his job. Caden Hatcher, one out away from a tidy six-inning performance against HBU, and he'll get the grounder towards third. Tough play for Cahill. High throw, Givon reaches and comes up with the out. Six innings, five hits, four strikeouts for Hatcher. 102 pitches for Hatcher. Bullpen is ready to go. They're at full strength. They weren't needed last night because of the stapler complete game. This is all about creating trust in a junior who you expect to be a workhorse for you down the stretch. The 0-2 right by Fitzgerald. Strikeout number five. <laughs> Confidence for Caden. Improving pitch by pitch. Now he gets a pop fly to short. Joey Morales, two down. And Devon put together back-to-back -to -back hits. He now has hit some three of his last four plate appearances. Juan Givon, time for the first triple of the Colonel's 2017 season, and he'll take the bag. Nori Gallagher, one pitch, one hit, Daniel Inslee. It take him long to experience the Galjor effect. First RBI of the 2017 season for Galjor. Second ribby of his goal of career. Three to one Nichols. Three and one mark, two saves, 1.42 ERA for Tarver. And a fly ball into right center field. Justin Holt, one down in the ninth. Matt Heck, he's responsible for the only RBI for HBU tonight. Full count walk in the first inning seems like an eternity ago. And now a tough two hop to third, Cahill, two away. Adam Tarver, he's been lights out since his first appearance on February the 18th when he had a scoreless inning against Wake Forest. Now he gets the strikeout to lock up save number three against Houston Baptist. Colonels win three to one. Caden Hatcher and the Colonels, a three to one win. Two runs allowed in the last 18 innings against HBU. You had a busy first inning, and then it was eight scoreless by your teammates. You go six scoreless after the first inning, but let, let, let's start with the first. Unearned run scores on, on three errors. What did it take to bounce back from such a tough start to the game? It was a little bumpy, but that's Juan Gavon at first, making his first career start. So he's not used to my sink that I throw over there. So I'm going to take that on me, but I just trusted my defense, and I knew we'd score runs. So that's – it's a team effort right there. Yeah, and then Juan says, you know what, I'm going to give you the first triple of the year so we can add some more insurance runs for you later. And, and that's really been the story of this team right now is you're, you're getting big bounce back runs and hits from a, a wide assortment of players. It was Quade Smith last night and again tonight. Feels like the success has become contagious for this team. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, most definitely. I think every, there's a lot of talent on this team. And then if you don't do your job, we got another guy behind you that can step up, which is exciting. And... Um, I think we're going to be fine. Uh, just keep pitching it the way we are, and we're going to get our hits when we need to. 
a year ago right now you're at South Georgia State and you're pitching at the junior college level. Now you've gone 13 innings and allowed two earned runs in your first two Southland Conference starts of your career. Compare and contrast the last year of your life and, and now what you've been able to do in your first two conference starts. Oh yeah, JUCO, it was it was easy for me and then I come in my first three starts which were a little bumpy. I had to learn a lot of things and grow up a little bit. But the last two weeks, uh, I think I've grown up a little bit and learned how to pitch at this level, which is using your defense and getting ahead of the hitters and throwing first pitch strikes. What's been a, a specific reason in these last two weeks that you felt like I've turned the corner and it, it can be off the field if there was a moment you felt like that, that you just realized I'm here, I belong, and, and I can play at this level? Well, I started listening to Coach Butler. I think the first three weeks I was maybe trying to do my own thing and it wasn't working. So I just trusted him and what he had for me to do. And um, I just get ahead with the hitters and throw your off speed for strikes, which I had a problem with. So we just changed up a couple grips and it seemed to be working. How important is it to be brutally honest with yourself? Um, just when, when you hear that from a coach, that it'd be easy to fight that. And when you say, okay, he's right, there are things I need to get better at. I'm, I'm just going to recognize it. Um, I think I had to do that. I think I was trying to do way too much when there's no need to. And uh, I just started to trust myself and just relax and just breathe out there. Let's go back to, to last Saturday because Cole Stapler, who's going to be an all-conference pitcher and has been remarkable all season, rough start Friday night at the conference opener against Northwestern State. You guys lose 8-5. to five. You're 0-1 in conference play. You're making your first career conference start at Northwestern State. Now you've won four in a row in conference play, but it all started with you going six innings and allowing one run at Northwestern State. What was it about your mentality before that game that allowed this team to, to get going and get hot? Uh, well, I knew he had a rough start, so I knew how to get his back and pick him up. And I sort of dealt him a start that he would do uh, he would do originally. So um, I had to pick up the team, and uh, I think we were fine after that. Caden, congratulations. You're 2-0 and in Southland Conference play. Forget about what happened in non-conference. Distant memory of those three non-conference games, and we'll see you again next Saturday in Lake Charles against McNeese. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. Thank Caden Hatcher now 2-0 and on the season. Junior from Florida. Impressive debut at home. First home start of his career, Coach Thibodeau, is you get to see a little bit of what you expected when you brought this young man in, but to hear him say, I just had to kind of step out of my own mindset, listen to my pitching coach, the, the last two starts speak for themselves. No, he, he has. He's starting to kind of pitch the way we envisioned it and what we, we expect of him. And I think there's even more in the tank, and that's a tribute to what he's got and, and what he knows and what he can do. But Coach Butler has done a phenomenal job with him. They're a lot similar in their styles. From I remember when Coach Butler pitched, when I coached against him, there's a lot of similarities there. But, you know, you, Coach Schoenrock's done a great job with him as well on the side. And, and he gets to throw to Alex Tucker. So it's almost like having three three pitching coaches there for you. And then you have Greg's done a great job with him. We actually have changed some things with him in the weight room uh, that, we, that we've done, uh, added a little bit more to it. So I, I think he's learned how to prepare all week instead of just showing up on game day ready to go. So uh, he's just matured a lot. And, and But there's a lot of more, lot more battles left in the tank for him. So uh, we'll just take this one tonight and be, try to get ready to go again tomorrow. There's three instances in tonight's game that really show you what the growth of Caden Hatcher is all about. Rough first inning, they score on three errors. He's pushing his pitch limit. He's approaching 100 pitches, 98 pitches after six innings. You let him go into the seventh, and then he finishes the seventh and hands the lead to your bullpen. All of those factors speak to the growth of, of this junior from Florida. Yeah, you know, I think he threw like 108 pitches, and, and quite frankly, if he gets out of the first unscathed, yeah. he goes complete game with less than 100 pitches, in, in my opinion, but that's part of it. And the great thing about it was he was able to overcome some adversity early, and he was able to pitch out of a jam that could have turned into something big. They could have scored three or four runs in the first, and it's a totally different baseball game, but but he was able to, to minimize the damage and get off the field, and, and, and then after that, he was, he was starting to roll and actually got better as he as the game went on so I'm proud of his efforts and, and certainly uh, know that there's more there. Coach Thibodeau in year seven with the Colonels he's got a four game winning streak in conference play Nichols now 11 and 8 on the season four and one in the Southland let's let's just keep the love going for a lot of names that we normally don't get to brag about but it's been the Quade Smith Juan Gavon and Nori Galjor weekend Gavon gives you a triple Galjor brings him in to make it three to one there's a reason why you put these guys in the lineup tonight well I guess you know a little trust and watching these guys work there's so much more to it you, you trust someone when you see their work ethic all week and you watch Nori's BP and what he's been doing in the cages on his own last night after the game he was by himself in the cages hitting and Juan's been doing the exact same thing 
And so those guys deserve their shot. And when two guys go down with injury, it's the next man up. And they've done a phenomenal job with it. And I think they're just showing you that they really want to play. They don't want to just be a part of it. They want to play. And so they know their jobs. They know they have to pick us up. And, and, and certainly we're proud of their efforts and know that there's a lot more there as well ahead of us. But how about Troy Cahill? You know, when we're down one nothing, he delivers a big blow for us. And, and that was good to see as well. Yeah, third baseman you bring in for his defense has three homers and nine RBIs on the year. Yeah, I know it. I, I don't even know what to say. I like the homers, but I want him to play defense too. So, <laughs> but he is a great defender. He works hard at it, and you know he's a he's a tough young man. He works really well with you know with the stuff we're trying to get him to do, and he's, he's probably the most coachable player I think I've coached in a long time. So. Well, in the left side of the infield, part of the most important defensive player of the game, Otten steals second base, mm -hmm. chopper towards third. He thinks he can he can pull a Justin Holt like you did last year against Tulane when you round third on a throw to first, but Morales sees it, throws home, two one game, and you make that tag at home plate changes the momentum that Houston Baptist thought they had. It gave us a little juice and excitement too, and so our guys in and they went to went to war after that. And I, I just like we only scored one run the rest of the way, but our bats were really really good. We were squaring some balls up. And with two strikes, our guys were battling, 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 getting into hitters' counts. So it was good to see that. And that's something you kind of don't see in the box score or, or really see during the game. But the, to see Justin Holt and, and Cahill and Juan and Joey and those guys yeah. fighting, 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 trying to get to another pitch, it was good to see. I think our offense is probably about to start going pretty good here before too long. What's the mindset to, to carry over and get the sweep at 1 p.m. tomorrow? Well, like I told our guys, it's, it, we're not going to drink the, the, the Kool-Aid of, of poison that, that can be comfortable, and, and comfortable is dangerous. And so uh, two out of three is not good. If you want to win the league, which is a goal of ours, you're not going to just settle for two out of three. And I know that I have a lot of respect for their head coach. I know that they're going to be ready to play tomorrow. So uh, we got to we got to be able to go and get it and play hard. And, and you know, I, I always tell our guys, and they take pride in it, is we're defined by our play on Sundays. And whether we show up or not and with a championship effort is, is critical. And I know I, I trust that our guys will be ready to go tomorrow, especially with uh, Mike Hanshaw on the mound. See you then, Coach. Thank you so much.